So, uh, good morning, Envoy Khan. I'm Harvey Tuch. I work at Google, where I'm an Envoy contributor, maintainer. And today, I'm going to be answering the question, which I'm sure is on a lot of your lips. Who is Envoy? OK, so what do I mean by who is Envoy? Well, the question is, like, who are the constituting companies, contributors, organizations, individuals behind the Envoy project? And why would you even care about this question? Well, there's a few reasons. First is understanding the business context. You know, like, is Envoy just the work of a single company? Is this a broad coalition of companies? Are most developers software professionals, or are they hobbyist contributors? The one that really got me interested was understanding the security dynamic of the Envoy community. There's this idea in open source that many eyes lead to all bugs becoming shallow, as we know that isn't quite true from looking at projects like OpenSSL and some of the more recent uh, vulnerabilities there, which have really shown that if you don't have a sufficiently uh, broad and active uh, review and maintain maintainer community, that this can be a problem. There's also um, sort of interesting questions around you know, who's using Envoy, and Matt sort of had a slide just previously showing the growth in the actual production use of Envoy. There's also a question of who's actually investing in Envoy and what does that look like um, as a, a developer community. Finally, I think it's kind of interesting to understand what is the governance model and how is Envoy sort of continuing to evolve beyond just the core organizations. Matt pointed out that we're always on the lookout for new contributors and maintainers. And what are the trends here? So we're going to dig into this uh, quantitatively in this presentation. Just to start with some logo confetti. So you can see here we have like roughly scaled by hand the organizations who have made the most significant contributions in terms of lines of code to Envoy. And as you would probably expect, Lyft and Google are the behemoths. But there's a number of other organizations ranging from small startups to late startups to uh, uh, very established companies um, such as you know, IBM or Salesforce. Looking at the maintainer community, this is a little more uh, tight-knit. This is uh, essentially just Lyft, Google, Tetra, to Apple, and um, an independent who used to work at uh, Turbo Lab, Stephen. And I think uh, that we're always in the interest in, interested in growing this community, but that's kind of the, the state of where it is today. So to dig into this and actually look at the numbers, I wrote a bunch of Python scripts, which went through the GitHub history, uh, looked at the Git graph, did some Git blame analysis, and some visualizations with matplotlib, and basically looked just specifically at the source uh, slash tree and those users who'd made non-trivial contributions. And this is what it looks like. So just looking at the lines of code which constitute Envoy, these have grown significantly since Envoy's open sourcing on GitHub, which was um, uh, October 2016, until today. It's grown from roughly or over maybe around 25,000 lines of code to around 110,000 lines of code. And this uh, rate of uh, growth has actually been accelerating, so sort of like a hockey stick. Um, what you can see is an uh, interesting feature is in April this year, we uh, introduced an architectural split between the core and extensions. And so you can see that uh, beige section there starts to uh, uh, become significant. And what this has allowed us to do is scale maintainer bandwidth and review alongside the growth of uh, various parts of Envoy, in particular as the number of extensions, a variety of extensions has increased. And you can see now fully around a third of the Envoy source is extensions, which means you could optionally compile that in. And we can have apply differentiated sort of levels of review to these extensions. Looking at PRs by organization, I apologize for the tiny print here. What you can actually do is um, look at these on the schedule. I'm also going to zoom in on these so we can see a little, in a little more detail who these organizations are. But just looking at the shape of this, this is the number of PRs by organization. And what you can see here is a power law in effect. Okay, So there's you know, Google and Lyft are by far the most prolific in terms of PRs. But there's a quite a large, long tail of other contributing organizations. And if we zoom in and take a look at what these look like, you can see these are some of these ones which I had on that first slide. There are companies like Square, IBM, Pinterest, VMware, and so on. There's also a big chunk of independence. These are folks uh, who, in my analysis, uh, it was kind of hard to find which organization they belonged to. Some of them weren't contributing officially on behalf of uh, their employer. 
Okay, looking at this by lines of code, a similar kind of shape. Um, what's interesting, though, to look at is in that long tail, you can see a bunch of other organizations pop up. Folks like Alibaba, uh, DataWire, Solo.io, Tigera, and so on. These folks have been ma making very significant contributions to extensions versus the core. They've usually been in a few relatively large PRs. Looking at uh, extensions in more detail, you can actually see, looking at the long tail there, that uh, this is actually much more prominent. And you can see, uh, in fact, the original shape where Google was one of the most significant contributors is actually uh, that we're only third now, and there's a, a lot of uh, folks in the long tail. OK, so moving on to just looking at you know, what does the actual composition of the source tree look like over time? And I think what you can notice here is there's really three phases in Envoy's life to date. There is the 2016 and before, which Matt talked about, which were the days in which Envoy was um, part, internal to Lyft, and it was uh, the early days of its open source. And here, it's just pink. That's the, the far left there. Then 2017 really is the year of sort of uh, Google onboarding and, the, and uh, the, 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 the initial growth of the rest of the community. That's that big growth in green there in the middle. And on the right, you can see 2018, which has been really the year of the long tail, and then where many other organizations have started to make very significant contributions. And now, you know, fully a third of the uh, Envoy source tree is, uh, has been written by or maintained or modified by um, folks uh, outside of uh, Google and Lyft. Here's a sort of a radial source map. So this is just essentially like a tree which, um, in, which is laid out uh, uh, on a radial axis. Um, the text is very small. What's interesting to look at is this is actually the core, the amount of green and pink. It's mostly Google and Lyft with a few other organizations. And if you zoom in, you can see some interesting things like, for example, many of the oldest parts of Envoy, such as like the HTTP connection manager and the codex, are really f fully written by Lyft and continue to be maintained by them. Other parts have very significant Google contributions, the uh, statistics, configuration, TLS handling. And then there are other parts, such as the cluster manager and upstream connection management, which have had uh, a lot of contributions from other organizations working on different load balancers, health checkers, um, and uh, that kind of stuff. So extension is a lot more colorful. This is uh, sort of starts to move away from that trend. You can see there's this big swath of orange there, which is uh, the contribution from um, to Turbine Labs with the Thrift proxy. Another large contribution from Alibaba was a Dubbo proxy. It's a kind of interesting. If you want to make an outsized contribution to Envoy, just upstream a uh, RPC filter, and you're guaranteed a, a spot in the Hall of Fame. Uh, because the, 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 these are actually very significant pieces of work. I mean, they're, you know, in terms of complexity, they're comparable to uh, the HTTP connection manager. Um, other parts have a, a, a huge uh, number of other organizations behind them, like um, stat, if you look at stats, tracing, um, health checking, and so on. These have uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, other folks contributing. So one final visualization to leave you with is um, a core diagram showing who's reviewing whose code. And what you can see here is, again, this familiar pattern where the core maintainer organizations, not surprisingly, because they're the maintainers and responsible for reviewing emerging code, are largely responsible for most of the code reviews, although there's a healthy amount of other folks uh, who are also uh, in, in there providing reviews. Um, the, OK, so in summary, I would say there's a few things that I just want you to take away from this. The first is, you know, we've got this like three phases of Envoy's history and this accelerating growth of the actual size of the code base. I think architecturally, the extension mechanism is working as intended and has been great at taming the growth there. Uh, the core continues to be really just developed and maintained by those uh, few uh, early organizations and the ones who are most active in the community. Extensions have a very large diversity. You, know, you can think of this a bit like you do with, like, say, the Linux kernel with the core and the driver uh, trees. So most PRs um, do have eyes on them from you know, folks working from this as their day job at these organizations who are actually using Envoy in production. And this is it's like a long tail of Envoy's uh, development up is really, I think, reflective of the uptake across the industry. And I think we're going to see a lot of that today at EnvoyCon. And we're going to hear from folks uh, who are both developing and using Envoy in production. With that, I'll say Thank you for your attention, and uh, yep, yeah, next. That's it.